Okay, we're we'll going? Yeah. All right, cool. So what I want to do is um, just basic little triple attack of cross sides. And essentially what I'm going to do is just try to get him to a harness position. So uh, a lot of ways you can do that here. Uh, let's end let's this way. All I'm going to look to do is switch my position as usual. Going across, and it's going to be like I'm attacking this arm lock. And more, more often than not, he's not going to be doing this. He's going to stay in nice and tight, elbows in, good with control. I still just want to start blading his body, so I'm going to use my own body here. I'm kind of ratcheting with my own with my own belly and chest. I come up, I come down. What I'm looking to do is get him to where his shoulders are at least perpendicular, so his back is, is exposed. This way, I drop down right to here, and then I swim this through, and I take a harness position. So essentially, I'm going from cross sides to somewhat taking his back without hooks, and I'm going from cross side position to a harness right here. So a lot of times, the person here is going to be looking to hand fight, or even if he's not hand fighting, maybe he's just going to be protecting his neck, going home alone, or like say if it's collar chokes, he's going to be doing something like this, getting ready to connect his knees to his elbows because he's thinking I may look to try to slide up and take his back. Okay, so I want to kind of uh, surprise him a little bit, do something different. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start to walk back parallel to him. Okay, I'm going to get my, oops, my hands from I'm going to try to get my grip higher up by his shoulder so that my own shoulder gets by his uh, by his head in the back of his head. And from here, I got I did a little work to get him onto his side. Now I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to bring him to his back. And from here you can tell his neck is a little jacked. I'm going to start to bring my shoulder towards his belly, just like this. So what I'm trying to do here is trying to create a rolling motion this way. And sometimes people will tap, especially if you get this cross face in and his neck is turned. But being a jiu-jitsu guy, I don't really want to win with a neck crank. And being a jiu-jitsu guy, he doesn't want to lose to a neck crank. So a lot of times here, I'll just do this to give him a little bit of pressure. And then he's like, what happened? I thought you were going to take my back. You know, this guy's a jerk. So from here, I'm going to start to do this. And I'm actually going to purposely let it go. Okay, so then maybe he breathes a little bit, maybe he thinks he's about to escape. So I go from head and arm to just an arm, and I slip that right into here. Okay, so this isn't a very traditional position to hold uh, for, for the arm lock. So what I'm going to do here is instead of trying to step over and around, notice when the head slipped out, it actually fell onto my thigh, which is what I wanted. Okay, so this, I'm setting up a couple different things here. So I've got the figure four, I've got his head elevated onto my thigh. From here, he may expect me, if he feels the figure four, he may expect me to try to jump up, try to do something like this armbar or kimura, but I don't want to sacrifice my position, so what I'm going to do is bring it up and bring it down to the same side. So I'm going to bring my elbow down to the mat, right to here, and get to this position. Sometimes I can get the tap here, I'm going to bring paintbrush his arm backwards, put a little bit, bit of pressure with my chest and my belly on his shoulder, and sometimes I may get the tap. A lot of times here though, when I come off of him, he's going to feel the difference in weight, and he's going to feel like maybe he can come up a little bit. Perfect. I like to sprawl down. This helps me get, get it in nice and deep. And that's actually what I was looking for the entire time. Now, I do this a lot, and with my guys, the main thing uh, I try to stress when they defend this, aside from turning the face to look, which you can't do now, is to get, make a fist, make two fists. Just noogie my chin, keep it up, under my chin, push it up. Yeah, look, it's both hands. Yeah, to try to get me from, keep me from doing this. Because once I can do this and start to turn, then that's it. Okay, so. As soon as I get to here, I'm just going to slap that out of the way, get my head down to the mat. And basically what I'm doing is I'm scissoring my body against his throat. I like to just take a palm up, palm down gable grip here. And all I'm going to do is squeeze with my elbows right to there. So I'm basically going from a neck crank to a modified Kimura to ultimately what I want is the north-south choke. But the reason I like this method of the north-south choke is because I take it at a point where he's like this and I can get it in super deep. As opposed to just being here and then doing this, and then he knows I'm going for it already. He's going to start to turn the face. Yeah, exactly. So real quick, let me just kind of run through it in real time. So if I'm here, I'm going to ratchet him up. He's thinking, oh, maybe Kimura, maybe the back. Right, so I'm here. I rest. I make sure he's not going anywhere. I'm going to turn his face, get parallel, and I'm going to start to do this sort of cranking motion, almost like a lifting. Okay, from here, I'm going to let it go and fall into the Kimura. As I do, I shelf. So his head never hits the ground. He's already on my body, kind of on the notch of my hip. From here, bring his stand to here. If I feel him getting up, which is what I really want, I'm going to sprawl back down nice and tight. I'm going to try to anticipate this. If he knows to do it, if not, it's fine. Push it, get my head down by his shoulder, get my grips, and I'm just going to walk a little bit and press with my elbows. Back. Very nice. That's my favorite one. 